Yep. No, I'm I'm going to tell them it works. Yeah, no, they'll buy it. They'll totally buy it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good talk to you, man. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn something. You're going to learn something. Oh, the hot topic of the day is soft mounting your motors. Should you soft mount your motors? Does it make a difference? How could it possibly make a difference? The screw heads are still touching the arms. It can't make a difference. But, oh, so many people swear it does make a difference. Johnny says it makes his quad more juicy. Juicy? What does that even mean? The copter that I'm using for this is the Eoshin Wizard, and the reason I picked the Wizard is because it came from the factory with two really janky bearings, like rattly, you could hear them rattling bearings. Now the copter still flies fine, you check out my flight review of it, uh, but it definitely has a little bit of vibration issues, and you can see in the flight footage, it kind of, if you just hover and look at something, every so often it'll kind of twitch to the left, twitch to the right. So it definitely has vibration issues. I'm going to start by showing you how I soft mounted the motors. It's not rocket science. You may have seen a video where other people did it. I do want to show you that I'm not using electrical tape. And the reason for that is I was just looking around my shop and I had some of this 3M Extreme mounting tape. And uh, I thought it's got exactly the right kind of sort of rubbery compressibility and maybe even better than electrical tape. So I decided to use that. Now, originally I thought that I would take the motor mounts out because the thickness of the motor mount is about equal to the thickness of the tape. And I thought maybe I'd do two rows of tape and that would substitute for one motor mount. My concern was that I needed the screws to be the right length. But after doing that, I found that the screws actually were plenty long enough and I ended up putting the motor mounts back in. I'll show you that when I'm done. What I did was I took a length of this tape about twice as long as I was gonna need for the square that I was gonna put under the motor. I folded it in half. And that's it. Uh, it's self-adhesive, so it sticks to itself, and it gives you, oh, maybe a millimeter to a millimeter and a half of padding. Next, I poked holes through the tape, and it turns out that if you use this 3M Extreme mounting tape, you don't really need to do this. Uh, it's rubbery enough that you can just sort of push the screw up through the tape and kind of scratch at it with your fingernail to let it protrude the rest of the way. A nice side benefit is that it holds the screws in place while you're then mounting the motor. So you can push all four screws up through the tape, and you don't have to fiddle around with a screwdriver like you see me doing here. Here's the final result. I do want to warn you that if you follow along like this, you are going to need to Loctite these screws or they will fall out and the motor will come loose. There's not enough friction with the soft mounting in place. That's the whole point. And the screws will back out. So you must Loctite these. And without any further ado, let's get straight to the results. Here we are in Betaflight Blackbox Explorer and we are looking at the raw gyro data. Uh, so in Betaflight, you can go in the CLI, and I think you type set debug mode equals gyro. And that causes it to log the raw gyro data before any soft filtering is applied. And that's really what we want to see. We want to see what's coming out of the gyro, and we don't want to have that data be tainted by the effect of any filtering or anything like that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to zoom all the way out to 10%, and we're going to look at the gyro lines. And in case you don't already know this, the thickness of these gyro lines is indicative of how much noise there is in the gyro. Uh, basically, the high frequency noise makes wiggles and jiggles in the gyro, and those wiggles and jiggles get closer and closer together until they look like one big fat line. And so if you look at the gyro and you see one big fat line, that is indicative of a lot of noise. And we see here immediately, <laughs> on the yaw gyro specifically, there's a ton, a ton of noise. And there's a relatively large amount of noise also on the roll and the pitch gyro. Let's take a very brief side trip and look at what the soft filters, that is the low pass, the notch, etc., are doing to this data. Because this is what's coming out of the gyro, but what's actually going into the PID loop. And in order to do that, we're going to go and we're going to add a graph and we're going to look just at the gyros. This is the filtered gyro data after all the soft filters are applied. And you can see that they're having a massive effect you can see the thickness of these lines versus the thickness of these lines. The filters are incredibly effective at cleaning up this data. However, if we look just at the yaw gyro, and in fact, let's get this custom graph out so it gives us more screen real estate. 
we can see that there are times when the yaw gyro just seems to be flipping out and then other times it's relatively well filtered. What that might be, I don't know. Why does it come out like that? I've seen this before and I've never quite been able to figure out why it manifests in exactly this way. Sometimes it's super thin and then it seems like it's slipping through the filters in some way. It's getting really, really bad. Okay then, the moment of truth. What does it look like after the soft mounting of the motors? Ta-da! Way better. Way better. Much cleaner. There's absolutely no doubt that this is much, much cleaner. Look how much thinner the lines are. And if we go, instead of looking at the raw gyro data and look at the filtered data that is actually getting into the PID loop, we'll see, I think, that it also much, whoa, this is, this is amazing. So the filters are amazing, first of all, right? But there's no doubt whatsoever that soft mounting made a big difference. Now, I've actually got two examples of the soft mounting because what happened was uh, while I was flying the first flight, I saw a whole lot of jello in my camera and it turns out the lens had worked loose. So, but I thought to myself, maybe the screws weren't tightened down enough and I need to tighten them down a little more. So let's just look at the effect that tightening the screws down even more had on the data. And we could ask whether this was better or worse than the previous one. And that's a little hard to judge, honestly. In order to judge that, maybe we could look at the spectrum analyzer. So looking at the yaw axis, we can see the max motor noise is 266 hertz. And with this slider all the way up, it's getting about to the middle of the screen. And there's a whole lot of random noise here as well. If we then go back before I tightened it down, what do we get? Slide that all the way up. So it looks like it was better with the screws looser because we have a lower magnitude of noise. And that sort of makes sense. By tightening the screws down, we compressed the rubber a little more and, and made it less able to filter the vibrations. If we then, just for the sake of argument, compare this to the pre-soft mount example. We can see just a, a whole lot of mess. In fact, we can see a lot of lower frequency noise that seems to have been uh, filtered out or shifted to higher frequencies. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the gist of it, but the bottom line is it done got better. Okay, so what's the takeaway? Number one, is soft mounting BS? No. Soft mounting does work some of the time. I proved it. It worked for me, and there are other people out there who are saying, it, I tried it, I didn't notice the difference. Well, we may not have had that much vibration to begin with, perhaps. There are many copters that don't have a lot of vibration. Soft filtering is more than enough, and soft mounting the motors may be a waste of time for you. But the people out there who are saying, I tried it, and it was a night and day difference, are also not full of it. They are experiencing a real thing. The results that we see in the black box are it's a, take it from a guy who's looked at a lot of black boxes. That is a night and day difference. Uh, the tunability of the copter, those little jitters that I showed you at the beginning, gone. And I'm sure that if I was trying to tune the copter to the nth degree and push the D gains as high as I need them to be and the P gains, that that would make a huge difference. What about the people who say, well, the screw heads are still touching? Well, number one, never let theory ruin a good experiment. If experimental results contradict theory, then either the experiment is wrong or the theory is misapplied. And there's a whole lot of people on the internet who want to take their theory and smack it up against your experiment and tell you you're imagining it. And I know a lot of the time people are imagining it. I'm looking at you, people who take homeopathic medicine. Success this. I'm going to get in trouble for that. But the thing is, there's so often people say, well, you know, one plus one is two, and therefore your copter can't fly any better. And it's like, hold on, we got a really complicated physical system here. You can't just boil it down like that. Yes, the screw heads are still touching, but you have more surface area to communicate energy, and therefore more energy is communicated. That's why big speakers make more noise than small speakers, because they have a larger surface area that's moving the air. Therefore, they communicate more energy to the air. And likewise, I think by soft mounting the motors, well, we've demonstrated it, you reduce the uh, you reduce the vibration that's transmitted to the frame. Even though the screw heads are still touching, there's less energy, there's less surface area there for the energy to get transmitted. So there you go. I think this is a big freaking deal. And I'll tell you why, you people who are still watching.
Thanks for sticking around. This is a big deal because gyros are giving us so much trouble right now. Especially some of the gyros, well, basically everything but the 6,000 gyro and maybe the 6050. The 9,500, the 60, or the 9,250, the 6,500 gyro, and all these fancy schmancy new gyros that are coming out with that aren't the Invencense, whatever. These gyros are giving us so much trouble with mid-throttle oscillation and gyro twitching. And some people, it's really hard to soft mount your flight controller sometimes, especially if you have something like, oh, say, the Shuriken X1, which has an integrated main board, or if you've got something like a, a TBS Power Cube, where you can't soft mount it. You can't soft mount some of these things. I think you people should try soft mounting your motors and see if that fixes the issue. It has a, a big potential to fix the issue. So, thank you. Thank you to Johnny FPV and Willard FPV, who are the two people that I think brought this to... The, this is not a new idea. It's been around before, and I apologize to you guys two years ago who tried this and are, are shaking your head going, you kids these days, you're rediscovering everything. You know, bell bottoms, come back around again. I know. I don't know who you are, and I apologize to you for not knowing who you are, but the people who brought it out today, I think, are Johnny FPV and, uh, and Willard FPV, and thanks to them for raising this attention. Thanks to you guys for watching. And if you have vibration problems, go soft mount your motors. Give it a try. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.